My name is Rhea Salta, and I'm your liturgist uh, today. Um, welcome to another Sunday in celebration of the Advent season. And I want to thank the choir again for that wonderful and inspirational cantata last week. And uh, thank you for spreading the spirit of Christmas throughout this space. Um, and so next week, I think we can look forward to the children's presentation for Christmas. And also on the 24th is Christmas Eve. It's going to be, uh, there's going to be a candlelight service in the church. So please come and attend that. If you're new, or visiting with us this morning, uh, please fill up this card found in the back of the pews. And uh, that is so that we can get to know you better. The pastor will then try to connect with you and tell you about what, what we are all about in this church. Also, this card also found in the back of the pews is for any of your prayer requests or prayer concerns. And these cards can be uh, dropped at the offering box at the entrance of this sanctuary. Um, please mark your calendars for the church council executive meeting of our congregation. These meetings are open to all and uh, note the, the dates and the times in your bulletin. Um, and don't forget to wear your name tags because we want to call everybody by their first names. Uh, if someone in the congregation cannot attend a church but would want to be blessed by us bringing church to them, Please contact the leader of our visitation team, Tanya Chu, who's right here, and uh, she will uh, organize a team to visit whoever needs the visit. Um, and we thank everyone for being here this morning. Oh, I want to mention, please don't forget that you have photo opportunities outside. We have a beautiful setting for photos, like a Christmas card outside at the Narthex. And we thank James Rogers for hosting Coffee Hour this morning. Oh, And, and the kids are sick too. A lot of kids are sick, so we have to pray for them so that they can come and perform for us next Sunday. Any other announcements? Linda. Good morning. For those of you who ordered C's candy, it has arrived. So, immediately following the service, for those people who ordered C's candy because things are a little congested in the narthex, we'd like you to come and take a seat here in the front row and we will distribute it from here. So, if you've ordered C's candy, don't go get your coffee, come have a seat and we'll get this dis uh, distributed first thing and it'll get out of uh, Stacy's way so she can uh, uh, do the teller. Um, 
but the, the candy has arrived, and so yay. Lots of thanks goes to uh, Julie, Sandy, and Amy for their, uh, let's just call it tenacity. Are there any other announcements? So if not, please rise for our call to worship. First, we have an intro from the point. God bless us with both patience and passion. We wait and pray to create the path of God. Let us pray together. While we are waiting, come to us, O oh God. Reveal your presence in our time of worship. Guide our steps in our speaking and our doing. Flow through our lives, our church, and our world. With your steadfast love, unending faithfulness, righteous justice, and mysterious peace. In patience and participation, we pray. Amen. Our gathering hymn is Canticle of the Turning. The lyrics are on the screen.
This claim, we signify the love of God surrounding us and fills us at all times, but that we recognize in a special way through the Christmas story. There is no greater power than love. It is stronger than rulers and empires, stronger than grief or despair, stronger than even death. We love because God loves us. Let us pray together. Let Let me God, we open ourselves to you this Christmas season. As these candles are lit, we light our lives with your own love. Prepare our hearts to be transformed by you, that we may walk in the light of Christ. Amen. And our sun response this morning will be, Come, thou long-expected Jesus. The first verse only. Why do you want to go? Why do you 
Christmas Eve. That was actually kind of a joke, Colin, but that's a, such a good question. I'd like to stay healthy the entire year, but I'm mostly just saying that next Sunday is one of the most important services of the church where we celebrate the birth of Christ and Colin. Yes, and Jesus' birthday, and Colin and Jacob's family just lit the candle of love for us which is what Jesus brings to us. Does anyone want to put this I light on? Too. I never. Okay, you want to do it? Why don't you go ahead and do it? And then the loved one is the, the pink one. I thought the pink one was white for Christmas Eve. That, this is the one for Christmas Eve when uh, the Christ candle. And next week is going to be joy, which is perfect because that's when you guys all are all presenting the pageant. Which we're so excited for. I'm going to be shut on Christmas. <coughs> well, okay. So, so you may have seen the last few weeks. I've been reading this book, How the Grinch Stole Christmas. I cannot. I've been reading little sections. So, well, week by week. That's okay. That's okay. You came at a good time. And today. Remember, the last three weeks, the Grinch has been what? Very, very mean and grumpy and, grumpy and grouchy. What did he do? He stole everybody's presents. He stole everybody's presents and their food and their decorations. But Christmas morning came and everybody was happy. Every, everybody was happy because it was Christmas and they were holding hands singing. They're holding their hands singing, right? And so I'm going to go on to see what happened to the Grinch when he saw that he took away all of the presents and still they were happy. That's right. And the Grinch with his Grinch feet ice cold in the snow stood puzzling and puzzling. How could it be so? It came without ribbons. It came without tags. It came without packages, boxes, or tags. By it, he means Christmas. And he puzzled three hours till his puzzler was sore. Then the Grinch thought of something he hadn't before. Maybe Christmas is about something more. Maybe Christmas doesn't come from a store. And what happened then? Well, in Whoville, they say that the Grinch's small heart grew three sizes that day. And this minute, his heart didn't feel so quite tight. He whizzed through his load through the bright morning light, and he brought back the toys and the food for the feast. And he himself, the Grinch, carved the roast beef. Yay! Why did he have a whole story? Well, you can actually take this home if you want and borrow it, and you can bring it back. I want to. Okay. Well, because that was just the end of the page. And what we lit today was the candle of love. And do you know why that the candle of love is pink, you guys? Because love is pink. Yeah. Because a heart is pink. A heart is pink. It's different. It's different from all the other candles because the love is the most powerful one of all the four candles. What do the other four represent? Yeah, joy, hope, hope and, and peace. And of the four, love is the most powerful. And just like the Grinch, when we practice love at Christmas time, it can spread to everybody around us and it can even make even the meanest people's hearts grow bigger and bigger and bigger. Well, the, 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 the five is the Christ candle that we'll be talking about for Christmas Eve. Yes, Julia. Yes, that's when we celebrate Jesus in a circle holding candles on Christmas Eve, which I cannot wait to see all of you on Christmas Eve. So now let's uh, put our hands together and pray, dear God. Dear God. Thank you for coming into our world. Thank you for coming into our world. 
and teaching us about love. And teaching us about love. And may we remember the true purpose of Christmas this year. And may we remember the true purpose of Christmas this year. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you so much for coming to spend time with me up here this morning. Surely, from now on, all generations will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is His name. His mercy is for those who fear Him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with His arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away, away empty. He has helped servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, in according to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Our hymn of preparation is Emmanuel, Emmanuel. Number 204 in our hymna, or on the screen. We will sing it twice. <laughs> Christmas tradition of gift coming comes from. Gift giving comes from. <laughs> you could list out your theories aloud if you have one. The three kings. The three kings, yes. God's gift of his savior. God's gift of his savior. Any other theories? Those are the two of the four theories. The St. Nicholas, who was a bishop, a 6th century bishop who had a particular heart for the poor. And, um, and there was also a theory, and this is a fourth theory, that before Christianity spread in the Roman Empire, that it was common for people to exchange gifts before the start of a new year. When 
whether any of these theories hold more weight than others, we have come to a time when gift giving is a very important part of Christianity as we celebrate it as a society and then of course in our church. And within Christianity, the gift giving tradition has a particular emphasis on taking care of the poor and those who have less. In one of my favorite books, Little Women, the four sisters, and you may remember the scene if you also love this book, though they themselves are not wealthy, as their father has been drafted off to war, and now they're just living with their own mother at home, they spend Christmas morning visiting a poor single mom and her many children, and they go to them to feed these children and give them gifts and then it's only later Christmas Day that they celebrate it on their own. In the passage that Rhea read for us this morning, it is a song of Mary and is called the Magnificat, which means the magnified, where Mary is magnifying God for having an eye for the poor and the lowly. Let us remember that Mary herself, the chosen one, wasn't a princess or a queen. She was an anonymous young girl from a working class family. And the passage goes, and you can read along if you'd like. My soul magnifies the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my savior, for he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. And surely from now on, all generations will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is his name. And blessed is he and those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. Just like the gathering hymn this morning, the canticle of the turning, and we'll also be singing another hymn at the end, which is based on the Magnificat, this passage and these two hymns capture the essence of Christmas, which is that God turns the world upside down. God sees the invisible and lifts them up. God takes the powerful and lowers them from their throne, like the case of Herod. And God, the most powerful of all, comes to our world in the most humble and tender of ways. The Christmas God is an upside down God. And this is why we pay special attention to the lowly, to the poor, to the suffering during the Christmas season. Every Christmas, the Christians in the Philippines practice welcoming the poor and the stranger through a pageant called, okay, and I'm gonna need help from my Filipino friends in our church, the Panululuyan? Panululuyan. Yes, Panuluya. It is modeled after the Spanish tradition of Las Posadas, which means the inns. And in this special tradition, it features a procession that reenacts Mary and Joseph, their journey from Nazareth to Bethlehem, especially their search for lodging upon arrival. Has anyone here partook of the Las Posadas tradition? Okay, so then, okay. So this is very similar. It's performed after dark, and singers process from town to town, following people who are holding up images of Mary and Joseph. And they visit house to house, chanting a song meant to take pity upon them so that they may stay with anybody who lets them in. And each of the homeowners, truly turn the exhausted Mary and Joseph away. 
As midnight approaches, Mary and Joseph find their way to the parish church where a replica of the nativity is re-erected and the birth of Jesus is celebrated at midnight. The Philippines has a long history of both deep Christian faith and direct resistance to colonial oppression, so it makes sense that the tradition like Hanaluyan would be such an important part of their Christmas tradition. There's a well-known Tagalog carol, Ang Pasco a Sama Pete, which means, are you guys laughing at my pronunciation? <laughs> you can do that. <laughs> There's a very, very famous Filipino Tagalog carol, which means Christmas is here and it goes like this. Let us all sing while the world quiet. Now comes the day of the child sent by heaven. Let us love each other. Let us follow the golden rule. And starting now, even if it is not Christmas, let us give to one another. The color of the candle of love on the Advent wreath <clears throat> is different because love is the most powerful of all. Our Christmas gift giving tradition is undoubtedly one of the most exciting parts about Christmas. And especially if you're the kind of person who loves to give presents and are very thoughtful, I know that there can be no other thing that gives you more happiness than giving a gift to somebody where you know it's gonna make them so happy. Like I, I bought my mother-in-law a present this year and I'm so excited to give it to her because I know she's gonna love it. And at the same time, I encourage us to expand our thinking about gift giving and get in touch with this other really important part of Christmas, which is about giving love to those who are hurting or sick or suffering. So how can you get into this true spirit of Christmas? By extending love to those who are hurting or suffering. As the song of Christmas, the Magnificat goes, the story of Christmas is that God came to lift up the lowly. To lift up the lowly. So how are we lifting up the lowly? In my favorite bakery in Claremont, they have a project where they collect shoes, new shoes, for families who can't afford to buy new shoes for their children. And so one of the Christmas traditions that we have in our house is we let my kids pick out new shoes for these other families. And that gives them the thrill of knowing that these, these kids are gonna have new shoes for the new school year. There are many sick and homebound people within our congregation, and there's a lot of need in just our own neighborhood. It can be one of these small ways, or maybe it's just about releasing that grudge that you've been holding towards a loved one in your life. What other time is best for releasing that grudge but now? Now is the time, now is the season. Thanks be to God, amen.
our prayer concerns for ourselves and one another. Yes, Carol. Yes, Nancy. Um, I have three prayer requests. The first, as many of you know, uh, my sister-in-law, Nan Citrin, fell and broke her hip on early Thursday morning. She's in the hospital. Um, she's actually in intensive care. They've done the surgery, but she has other complications. So um, uh, please pray for Nan. Um, then my aunt, Hiroko, I found out the day after Nan fell, my great aunt sharing all that. We will definitely lift them up. Yes, Tanya. Um, please still pray for Lorna. Uh, her suffer heart, broken heart. And uh, uh, remember, um, pray for Julie Potter. Still pray for her. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yes, Jay. John and Lucy. We'll definitely lift them up in prayer today. Thank you. Yes, Cynthia. We celebrated my granddaughter Riley's seventh birthday, and we pray for James and his children to get well. Thank you so much. Yeah, they'll definitely be here by the pageant. And we pray for others in our congregation who are still sick. Yes, Kristen. I want to just uh, thank uh, Miss Rod and everyone uh, for his mercy and grace. I was able to pass my anatomy class. Yay! Thank you for sharing that with us. Kristen asked us for prayers last week for her, her anatomy exam, and she passed. Yay. Yay. Yes, Laura. I want to deliver a prayer of praise for those who took the time to decorate our sanctuary. Yes, thank you. Beautiful. Yes. Thank you, everyone who did decorate our sanctuary. It does look so beautiful. Okay, well, 
let us gather our hearts to pray together. Dear God of love, we thank you for the children's story where even the Grinch's heart was able to be softened and grew. And may that process happen for all of us that instead of being distracted by so many of the busyness and the expectations of this season, that we would remember why we're doing all of this to begin with that you came into the world to love us, to forgive us, to give honor to the lowly, to lift up and heal those who are sick. And so at this time, we pray for that spirit of Christmas to infuse this congregation, its mission, <coughs> its ministries and leaders, as well as a church universal. Lord, in your mercy, for the healing of the earth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. <clears throat> for peace and justice in the world and for the nation's leaders. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. For our local community and loved ones, we lift up to you Chris and Cynthia, who are going to be traveling and celebrating their honeymoon. We thank you for Kristen and passing her exam. We pray for others in our congregation who are traveling, like Pastor Mike and Ginny, and for Catherine and Athena. And now let us name any others in the silence of our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We pray for the sick and those who need spiritual, emotional, or physical healing. We lift up to you, especially those who are in our congregation or related to those in our congregation, we lift up to you. Nan, Hiroko, and George, Margaret and her husband, Tap, for Lorna and her family upon the death of her daughter for Judy Potter, for all of those of us who have lost loved ones this time of year, for Mavis' son, John, and for Lucy, for those in our congregation who are ill and need strength, let us lift any others in the silence of our hearts.
Lord, in your mercy, we pray for the poor and oppressed, especially now for the light of Christ to shine in their hearts during this season. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. For whatever else we long for, knowing that no prayer is too big and no prayer is too small. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Let us now give thanks for God's overflowing blessings in our lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers, and let us now confess to God our sins, for how we have hurt God, our earth, one another, and ourselves. People of God, anyone in Christ becomes a new person altogether. The past is finished and gone. Everything has become fresh and new. Friends, believe the good news of the gospel. Let us stay together. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. And let us now pray the prayer that Jesus himself taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. to sing our final hymn, My Soul is Filled with Joy, which is based on the Magnificent Prayer.
It has been a practice within the church for many centuries. We offer our tithes to strengthen the mission of the church. It is, and it's not just the leader's jobs to build the church, but for all of us to offer what we can and let it be a blessing to us and for our neighborhood. We had a successful pledge drive, but there are still those who may be um, not submitted their uh, pledge card. So if you haven't, there is this form uh, that you can find at the Narthex and just put it again in the uh, offering box. For our, uh, there are three ways that you can submit your offerings. One is, of course, the uh, offering box at the entrance to this um, sanctuary, and you can mail it to the church address or online by, Nar by Zelle. And remember, it's always blessed to give. Amen. And now as we go from this place, may the light of God shine within all of our hearts, forgiving those whom we have grudges against, giving to those who have less, and sharing the love of God to everybody around us. Go in the name of God our Creator, the Son, the Redeemer, and the Holy Spirit, the Sustainer. Amen.